actually going to be reading from Luke 19, starting in verse 28. When he, Jesus, had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples and said, Go into the village ahead, and as you enter, you will find a young donkey tied there. No one has ever sat on. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent left and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the young donkey, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the donkey? The Lord needs it, they said. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing the robe on the donkey, they helped Jesus get on it. And as he was going along, they were spreading their robes on the road. Now he came near the path down the Mount of Olives, and the whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in the heavens and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, rebuke, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. And as he approached and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you knew this day what would bring peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the day will come on you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. And they will crush you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave one stone on another in you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. That time when Jesus entered Jerusalem for the last time, it was a very bittersweet experience. There was joy and celebration for all the miracles that Jesus had done. In the Gospel of John, it says that there were people celebrating and remembering how Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. There were people shouting and dancing and singing, waving palm branches, throwing their coats upon the ground in front of Jesus as he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. It was a ecstatic celebration, so much so that the Pharisees got all hot and bothered. They were upset, not so much for the noise, they were upset because people were acknowledging Jesus as the son of David, as the one who comes, as the king. They told Jesus that he should rebuke his disciples. Keep them quiet. Tell them to be more orderly. What's wrong with these people getting all emotional about Jesus Christ? But he said if they were to keep silent, the stones themselves would cry out. For the glory of God is being revealed in the earth. His arm is being shown. His salvation is being revealed to all the earth. The king of glory is coming to the ancient city, entering those gates. 
But Jesus isn't coming to receive a crown. He isn't coming to do what the people expected him to do. As Jeannie says, he's coming as a lamb. He's coming being led to the slaughter as the Passover lambs were prepared to be sacrificed for each household. Yes, he is the Messiah. Yes, he is coming to save his people. But do they really understand the price of that salvation? The crowds felt it was the happiest day of their lives. Their expectations were high, not just because of the miracles, because prophecy was being fulfilled. Would Jesus be their king? Would he overthrow the Romans? Would he manifest the kingdom of God on earth? Would he show forth the power of God? Yes, he would. But he came as a humble servant, willing to die, to pay the price. The disciples probably thought that this was finally Finally, he's getting the recognition and the honor that he deserves. Finally, we're going to move ahead with this program of ours and see Jesus glorified in the earth. He was glorified in the earth. He prayed in John, glorify your name through me. And the Father says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it but he was glorified by being lifted up on the cross. He was glorified through his suffering and his death. And Jesus, though there was great praise and celebration of who he was, wept over the city. Again, it was one of those strange bittersweet experiences, we all have them. There was something terrible about the fact that this city would reject the King of Glory, would reject the Messiah, would not understand his suffering, would not understand his cross, and what he was doing. And he said the future of Jerusalem was bleak. He prophesied about Jerusalem as he did in other places as you read in the scripture. He prophesied the things that were going to come to pass. There was going to be armies surrounding the city. There was going to be destruction throughout the city. The city would be burned. The temple would be cast down. It all happened in 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the city and the temple and burnt it with fire. Not one stone shall be left upon another. Jesus was aware that not only of his suffering and what he would go through, but the fact that they didn't recognize God's visitation, his timing, his they did not accept the truth. And because of that, there would be judgment in the future. Now Jesus had been trying to prepare his disciples. He had been talking to them for some time about the fact that the Son of Man would be arrested and betrayed and crucified and rise from the dead. But they were all in denial. They did not listen to his words. In fact, Peter at one point rebuked Jesus for saying such negative things. You know, those negative confessions, can't have that. No, that'll never happen to you, Lord. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, because he knew the way the Father had ordained for him. 
He knew the cup that he had to drink, the bitter cup. He knew the way was only through Calvary that he would bring salvation. He was the suffering servant who understood our grief. We, like sheep, have all gone astray, but the Lord has laid the iniquity of us all on him. As we celebrate this Palm Sunday, we are fully aware of the price that Jesus had to pay. We know the story. We know that he would be the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb that was slain, that death and destruction might pass over us, that we might be covered by the blood, the blood of the Lamb, that we might be spared from the judgment of God. Many people wonder why Christians continually bring up the suffering of Jesus Christ, his cross, his death, his burial, his whipping, and his betrayal, his arrest. Why bring up all these things? Why is it important for us to focus on these things? Isn't Jesus Christ risen from the dead? Why shouldn't we just focus on the positive stuff? The fact that the tomb is empty, that he rose from the dead, that he is alive and he is with us. Why talk about the cross? Why not skip over all that stuff in between Palm Sunday and Easter? Sunday. Why have those services, those special services where we remember his suffering? We remember because it's in the Word of God. It's in the Gospels. It's God's Word revealed to us. It's the old, old story as we sang. We remember because we want to remember always the price that he paid for our salvation, the suffering that he did for us. We want to remember that the road to the resurrection was through Calvary, was through the cross. We have to be reminded of this. We know that human nature wants to suppress these very negative and traumatic experiences. Sometimes if people experience great trauma, they, their minds actually suppress and blank that out. They don't, they don't like to be reminded of it. They don't like to think about it. And when they do think about it, it, it re, the trauma resurfaces in their lives. So some people think that the solution to the problem is, is just never talk about those negative things that have happened, those terrible trauma. No, just leave those things alone. And it would be an, interesting if those things were left out of scripture. A lot of ancient literature left out some of the worst things that happened because they didn't want to talk about failure. They didn't want to talk about sin. They didn't want to talk about defeat and things that happened. They wanted to only emphasize the good things. But you know, the Gospels are extremely honest and sometimes brutally honest and even shocking. I would say that sometimes the scriptures are R-rated. They're not PG. They're not friendly to small children. It talks about things. 
sin and death and wars and destruction, about blood being shed, about the sacrifice of Jesus, about the brutality that he went through the last week, about how his closest friends betrayed him and forsook him, fearing their own lives, running and denying that they even knew him. The Bible is very honest about human experience, about human struggle dealing with in the face of fear, how the disciples, they were so afraid, they hid. In fear of the Jews, they didn't want to be crucified themselves. They didn't want to be arrested. They were concerned about their own lives. They didn't understand why Jesus died. They were afraid. It's interesting, after the resurrection and ascension of Christ and the birth of the new church and everything, you would think that they would talk mostly about the resurrection. You would think that they would emphasize the glorious truth that Jesus is alive. And they did, but they also talked about the cross. Why did they go back to the cross? Paul says, one of the greatest apostles and writers of the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, he says, For I have decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. The cross is not popular. The cross is not comfortable. It's not a, a scene of happy thoughts in wonderful places and warm fuzzies. <laughs> it's a place where judgment and wrath come down upon an innocent man who is taking upon himself the sins of the world, where people mock Jesus, where people tell him to come down on the cross, off the cross, and save himself. If he saved others, why can't he save himself? Where even one of the men who was crucified next to Jesus was mocking him, though he was innocent. So why? Because, as Paul says, there's power in the preaching of the cross. The cross is where sin is defeated. The cross is where the power of God is released. The cross is where our sins are atoned for. It is the place where there's victory over Satan. Not, not just the resurrection. The resurrection is glorious, but it is the cross where the defeat of the powers of darkness comes. Thank you, God. That is where the power of God is released. When I think about the fact that the early church, they, they, they were living in such a glorious time of the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, and, and the, many were coming to Christ. There were thousands coming to Christ and yet they, they continually went back to the message of the cross, which offended the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin and the powerful people in Jerusalem who, who helped put Jesus on the cross, later were rebuking the apostles for their preaching where they said that they killed Jesus. They put him on the cross. They were upset that they kept bringing this man and his crucifixion upon in their message, not just the resurrection. They kept bringing it up. And they were persecuted because of it. One of the evidences I see in the scriptures about the importance of the suffering of Christ, of 
the cross of Christ, of all that he went through that what last week, is the visions that John has in the book of Revelation of heaven and the glories of heaven. In Revelations 4 and also Revelations 5, I'll read from Revelations 5, 6. The book of Revelation starts out with a, a glorious vision of Jesus, the glorified Son of God. But in 5, 6, this is how it describes Jesus. And I saw a lamb standing in the center near the throne with the four living beings around it. And the elders were also around the lamb. And the lamb looked as if he had been killed. He saw Jesus standing in the midst of the throne. And what did Jesus look like? A lamb. A lamb that had been slain. And after that, the lamb took the scroll and the four living beings and the 24 elders bowed before the lamb and each one of them had a harp. Also, they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's holy people. And they sang a new song to the lamb. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its keys, seals because you were killed. And with your blood sacrifice, you bought people for God from every tribe and language and race and nation. And you made them to be a kingdom and to be priests for our God. And they will rule on the earth. So why is Jesus worthy? Because he is the lamb who was slain. Because of the sacrifice which he purchased people from every tribe and nation. It was, again, in heaven, what are they celebrating? They're celebrating the lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. They're celebrating the death of Christ on the cross. The vision in, continues, and then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels. Angels were around the throne, the four living beings and the elders, and there were thousands and thousands of angels, 10,000 times 10,000. And the angels said with a loud voice, all power and wisdom and strength belongs to the lamb who was killed. He is worthy to receive all glory and honor and praise. Then I heard every created being that is in the heavens and on the earth and under the earth and in the sea and everything in all these places saying all praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. To the Lamb of God. Jesus, who is the Lion of Judah, is also the Lamb of God. And that picture of Jesus, the crucified one, is not diminished at all in the glories of heaven itself. You realize that he, the glorified Christ, when he appeared in the resurrection, when he's seen in heaven, in all his glory, he still has the scars of his wounds. He still bears the scars in his hands and his feet. The cross is not forgotten. The cross is the center of who Jesus is and why he came. Why are we obsessed with suffering and death and blood and the cross. Not because we're morbid, but because it is the place of life and glory and power released into the earth. 
forgiveness and cleansing. It is the place where we meet with God. We are reconciled to him. Where, where our old sinful lives are crucified with Christ. We remember the cross whenever we take Holy Communion. And Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. What does he want us to remember? That he gave his body for us, that he shed his blood for us. He wants us to remember. They remember in heaven. They tell those stories the stories that never grow old, never lose their importance. People on earth don't understand. There are many in Christianity who want to change the story, to make it more modern and more palatable a little more friendly and easy to receive. And it's easy to emphasize the good things and neglect talking about the cross. It's easy to come Palm Sunday and, and have a celebration and then come Easter Sunday and have another one and forget what's in between. Why should we even go through remembering those terrible days, those horrible realities? You know, when the Passion of the Christ came out a while ago, Mel Gibson did that movie and the first time that I went to see it. It was shocking. It was horrible. It was morbid. It was uncomfortable. It was devastatingly realistic. It was focusing on Jesus' suffering. It had to be R-rated. It was so intense. There was a lot of controversy about it. But what was the point of it, the point was to look at that suffering in a realistic way. And even what he did was probably not the full extent of what really happened. Though I think he came pretty close. And it, it brought people to tears. It brought it continues to be used in many places around the world. They show that during Passion Week. But it certainly was a difficult thing to realize what Jesus went through. But it's important because then we can appreciate the salvation that we have in him and that we can appreciate the glories of his resurrection and his ascension and all that he has done and continues to do. It all is because of what he did on the cross. So as we continue this week, as we go through this final week before Easter, before resurrection, don't be afraid to spend a little time to think about it, to pray about it, to read the scriptures, to meditate on it, to be a part of those services, those Good Friday services, and realize indeed that he did it all for you because he loved you. Amen. As we close, we're going to sing this old hymn. The Old Rugged Cross, number 504.